Thank you for staying with us. Now, they say the grass is not greener on the other side, <laughs> but where you water it. Um, our next guest says he has no intention of relocating. Ayola Jolami is Jola Yemi is the managing partner, CEO of Swift Think Limited and idea development and management firm based in Lagos. So remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa with the hashtag Ways, W-A-Y-S, or SMS 081-8038-4663. Thanks for joining us, Ayola. Thank you very much, <laughs> and happy new year. Happy you new said year. something during the break. My heart just go boom. You said we are sitting on a gun, gun keg, keg, keg of, of gun, gun powder. powder. Why do you say that? Well, because uh, whether we like it or not, the number of people that live in the country, it's still a minority, yes. But it's a core minority in terms of the middle class or the emerging middle class. Before now, it was like uh, the other speaker said, uh, she said it was the, you know, the, the grassroots guys, those who go in to do. But right now, even the emerging middle class don't mind going in there to the menial jobs because they feel, oh, I have a chance of security, or I have a chance of you know a better life. And my friends will tell me, oh, my children are secured. I mean, I have three sons, right? I have three boys and I know that they have to go to school. They're going to some of the best schools in Lagos. But the point is, would they be competitive when they grow up? Yes. Mm. Would they be able to compete favorably with other guys out of the country? Maybe yes. But how many people have that opportunity here? So until we address the infrastructure gap here in Nigeria, Truly and really, we are sitting on the cake of gunpowder because our children who are traveling abroad, who are having the great education, having an amazing life, would have to come back to Nigeria someday. So who would they be leading? Or who would they be working with? So if all of us choose to say, well, let us bail out, that, that means we're either bailing out to say there's no more Nigeria, or we're leaving Nigeria to be a pariah state. So it's a decision we have to make. Very, very, and it all said it clearly, and I think I, I concur 100%. We have to take very firm steps to ensuring that it's not a short haul, it's not a sprint. It's something we must build a system across to ensure that by the time we look back at Nigeria in 20 years from now, yes, we have a country we can all be proud of. Mm -hmm. But that will not happen by proxy. Yeah. So, um, who's going to do that? Who's going to take the lead? That's what I'm saying. So, for instance, I, for one, I've told everyone that cares to hear that I'm going nowhere. Not because, I mean, I do travel, I go for courses, I go for business trips, I have reasons to go for vacation and all that. But I know that if every single one of us don't understand that it's a handshake, those who are currently abroad who have reasons to travel abroad, and, and those of us who are here, until we understand that it's a handshake that is required, we will not build Nigeria. Yeah. And when I'm by handshake, so people have to travel, and that is, it's a, it's a human right. Exactly. Migration yeah. is it's a human, human right. A we right. must establish yeah. that and agree on that first that some people just must travel. If any country in the world would grow, there would be a mix of immigration and emigration. Yeah. China, for instance, has, they pay a huge amount of money. I mean, I was in the UK last, last November, and it's like every, every borough has a community for Chinese. Yeah, so. Yep, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And the Indians. Yes, I mean, the Indian one is like way back. Yeah. But the Chinese one is the new deal. It's the new, new deal. Right? Uh -huh. And they have, borough, every borough has a community of Chinese people. Now, what they do is they send their people there. The people on ground are pretty much just handshaking. What is happening there that we can do here? That is what is missing in Nigeria. We are very individualistic in our approach. We are, everybody's thinking about themselves. My family. Self-preservation okay. is the order of the day in Nigeria. So the, f the solution to this is very simple. The community in diaspora is less than 4 million people. I mean, based on 2020, yes. In 20 Total? Yes. All the oh, yes. Really? The Nigerians in diaspora are less than 4 million, according to the statistics available. Now, that is documented migrants. Documented, <laughs> yeah. Right? <coughs> documented migrants, at least than 4 million. And that, if you look at it in statistics, it's just about... 20%, in fact, 2% of Nigeria's population today. So it's a minority in every way, but it's a critical minority because yeah. we're talking about close to, uh, almost about, I think about 30 something or 40 something billion dollars per annum that flows in from them in remittances, uh -huh. yeah. right? So we cannot ignore that, but is it structured? Or is it just pretty, pretty much another way of self-preservation? So once we build a structured system around it that ensures that those who are here and those who are there have a proper okay. think. Then we can build a country. So my, my, um, I went to a, a secondary school and primary school with a young man, currently 
we're in our 30s, mid 30s, and he's already um, a professor. Mm. He's the head of, uh, um, he's the head surgeon, he's a neurosurgeon, yeah. he's the head surgeon in Germany. Mm. And I know, if this boy was in Nigeria, he would be nowhere. He would not be anywhere. anywhere. Absolutely. Because Lamy was saying during the, before we came on the show, that the, the most, um, um, in terms of brain drain now we're yeah, talking, the health sector. The health sector and the educational and sector. Now. Yes. now yes. Yes is the most, uh, the, 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 part, the, the one that is the most, 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 most impacted, impacted. Yeah, yes, yes. That, those it. sectors. Mm. And we're not, we're not looking at it. Because right now, the government is saying, oh, they want, let's stop um, uh, medical tourism, mm -hmm. let's stop this. Uh, yes. <laughs> you made a funny statement yeah, about well, don't, don't go abroad for medical treatment. treatment. You know, I just know the way you were saying it. It costs too much, but that's probably because all the doctors have gone abroad. Oh. You understand? And the infrastructure. No, you man. know, so, oh. how? Because, you know, if, in, interestingly, he reached out to me last year yeah. and he was saying something about he want he wants to come to Nigeria to yeah. actually set up yeah. a, a proper hospital yeah. you know like what he has in Germany yeah. and I told him I said oh God, <laughs> if you want to do it if you're doing it with your funds fine but if you say you want to you because he is saying that because there's no how the government will not be yeah. the involved. government has to be involved for it to work well yeah. So how do we start with this? Because I don't even know where to start from. Okay. I honestly, I didn't have an answer for him. Okay, so like, like I tell everyone that cares to hear, government is just an enabler. They're not the doers. Definitely. They need to get that very clear. So people say, oh, government has not done this. No, government is just an enabler. The amount of money that is in the budget of the country is just a trickle of the amount of money that passes through the economy in a year. It's just a trickle. But if that budget is not passed, and, and appropriated ac accurately, then we have a problem of, of fiscal crisis, right? Yeah. But so where, where we have to come to is, let's stop this thinking of, oh, government has to do this. We have to do something, and that is where we need to start. We, it has to be a collective effort. What am I doing differently from what government is doing? It's simply, I am supposed to be the implementi implementing partner of what government's policies are. Okay. That's simply what it is. I'm sorry to take you on that. I have worked with government a lot. I'm, I'm really sorry. We've, I work with government a lot in, in the health sector, for instance. So building a super specialty hospital, I work with them in building the communication and, and narrative around that. How did they work around it? People in diaspora were the ones they reached out to. But it was here in Nigeria that it had to be implemented. Mm. So if you can build a system around that diaspora and local interaction properly, yeah. Now, but the thing is, are we, do we have people in government who even understand that's these the basic principles? Do we have people, and that's where my worry is, when, when, when people run out of the country, I say, you will come back to a country ruled by urchins. Hmm. They will, so the people who influence policies that will guide your everyday life will be people who, who understand nothing okay. about governance. So if everybody runs away, you come back in 10 years and you keep complaining because the people who will be in government are the people who have no business in government. In government. Mm -hmm. So where we need to close the gap is it's a long-term project. Like I said, 20 years is my own timeline. And my community of, of thinkers also believe that 20 years is a good time to cause that, that change. Okay. It cannot be a four-year or eight-year or one democratic cycle. It cannot but, but have we taken? Have we started taking the steps? Well, in pockets, which is not actually very effective, but in pockets, yes, there are think tanks being set up yeah. to start looking at the, the underlying policies that guide Nigeria, for instance, even from our constitution, from how we do business, from the ease of doing business, from our tax regime. The funny part is, the reason why people don't pay tax is because they don't see their tax work. Definitely. That's simply what it That's is. That's the only reason. Because if people see taxes work, I know companies in Nigeria that are struggling to pay the taxes because they are the ones running generators, they're the ones paying for water. So the basic amenities are Security. not there really. But the point is, if all of us keep saying, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there, that is a and negative we do narrative. about it. I tell people there are two sides to a coin. It's either half full. Of half, half empty. Or half, half empty. empty yeah. So if I'm seeing it half empty, I'm on the pessimistic side. That means I'm seeing it's going down. Yeah. If it's half full, it means I'm seeing it from the optimistic Positive side. All side, the yeah. pragmatic side or objective side, mm -hmm. it's, it's possible for it to be filled up. So can we look at things more from that flip side of it's possible that this can get better? And truly, the indices show that it gets worse before it gets better. Yeah. And that means it's crash. We're at that point where we're getting to our tipping low point. Lay, low right? Lay, yeah. we're, we're almost at the lowest ebb. We're not there yet. So trust me, I'm not a prophet of doom, but the economy is still going to nose dive even further before it gets better. Because we need to hit the rock bottom 
for us to be able to look at the very specific things that would help us you know I, I always uh, tell my friends especially when this issue of uh, visas we started getting um, kind of um, rejections Denial, yes. at the um, American and embassy, embassy especially, yeah, especially yes. and I always tell my friends that uh, so why are you why everybody why is everybody crying wolf mm. I people are doing that because there's an escape yes until when there's no no visa no for anybody, we yeah. all sit down here and face the problem. But why do we even have to wait till it's that extreme? But because it's it's you see, I need to make mention of something that hit me really strong. We are not a thinking people. No hmm. way. We're, we're very shallow. We are enjoying. We, we love enjoyment. So we, as said, far as the word, the condition is favorable. We keep managing. It's well, it's part of the yeah. education we receive. But I, I, so that's I, I, the point I, I'm going to. Yes. You it's have because, to really because you talked about these people who they're at the grassroots. Yes. They don't have anything. If you even start to educate people from that level, you start to change the mindset. mindset. But do you know that the people who are in government see that as a weapon? Yes, that's, that's right that's there. So if you have an on 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 enlightened. You know, it becomes, a, they love it. So I'm happy you, you were the one that in case yes. he's the one oh, that yeah, brought yeah, us yeah. there. No, and I, I will, said it. And I will say it. I always say to people that it is a strategy right now. The oh, way yeah, I have is. studied it Nigeria, is. It, is. Yeah. it is a strategy for our political leaders to keep Nigerians uneducated. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. it is. You know, so if we know that politically, because it is to the advantage I, you cannot come and give me 5,000 5, or a loaf of bread. For, but it will for you, Absolutely. of course. You know, but there are millions of us yes. and a huge chunk of that that, that would collect that money yes. to pay I mean to get those, those I mean those votes, votes out votes, yes. so how do we now even solve this problem because so, <laughs> the, uh, the I, I, people that are supposed to preserve this thing they are uh, the ones actually using it as a tool why because if every person is still very individualistic that's simply what it is if every person is not thinking about their own and going out to and vote. going out to see, so the thing is I tell people how many people can can police you know, shoot at once. Mm. But it's that is, oh, I have to be safe. Oh, my family needs me. Oh, this, oh, that. But if we create a system where everybody knows that this we're doing is not for me. It's for us. It's for us. The things I do for, for a living are not for me. It's for us. You know, I play very big in the social enterprise space and youth empowerment space for the past 11 years. It is not for me. If it was for me, I would not even come back. Right. So, I mean, I could have used to stay, stay in Europe and I know have a good life. Pretty much, it would have been fantastic. But we would know that Nigeria is where we can build. And I was standing in it to backstage. I said, Nigeria is the only place that I know that you put in your money and your return on investment can be as high as 200%. Hmm. It's the only place I know. Yeah. In other places, it's a very good land. Oh yes, it is. You will get two hundred percent return on your investment if you. That's why you find every flight I take back to Nigeria. It's full. It's full of foreigners. <laughs> and I ask myself, where, where are they going are they to? Coming? Because they see what we don't see, and that's the perspective that Uti mentioned, which is the place of education or civic enlightenment. If our people know that starve now, gain later, right? Let us have a concept of delayed gratification as. A, an inbuilt, inbuilt system in us, yeah. ingrained in our fabrics from now. My children know. Their years are telling them, boys, we're going nowhere. He said, why? Because we need to build. Hmm. Oh, daddy needs to set up something. Oh, daddy needs, oh, great, no problem. After we do that, yes, we can go. So I already in, ingrained that into them from now. That don't feel entitled. And that is the biggest challenge we have. We have a set of entitled. aristocrat group that feel entitled. Hmm. And until we have the right set of people in governance, those who have the, 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 the love of the country at heart, we will not be able to build it. So I and a few people that I know are saying to ourselves, let us stay back. Let us walk through these rough edges. Let's get into the very seat of So the how thing. can we build this community to grow it bigger? Because okay. you know why I say so. Yes. I have a project that I run with children. Okay. And trust me, every year is always a tug of war to get funded. Mm -hmm. why, is, why do I do this project? Because I believe in mind empowerment. If you empower the mind of a child, Absolutely. you have given that child the liberty and the freedom to, to explore the world mm -hmm. and become great. Yeah. You know? I don't think personal. I've never thought personal. Anything I do, it has to be a collective project for a greater good. But I realize that a lot of times we have pockets of this yes. initiatives that you talked about. But it is, it's smaller. Yes. The communities are smaller. So yes. how do we bring more people? Because me, I believe empower everybody yes. and see 
how we can change these things. But you see, some of us that we know these things, we are not even we don't even have the capacity to be able to empower other people. Okay. So the the that um, this thing is getting smaller and smaller, and you cannot make an impact if you cannot make that that community a big. Um, gap. But I mean, you, make it big. But you know, there was something you said that I, actually is where the biggest challenge is for us, the enlightened group. We feel that we don't have what it takes to empower people. Well, That's where the challenge really is. Now, what we do in our business is not even a million dollars per annum in revenue, but we made it a point of duty to set aside a portion of that to build people. Some years, revenue deep so bad that it's not even up to $200,000 but as revenue in the whole year. But that is a certain mindset we have built as a business that a portion of our profit must go into youth development and that is running for five years going to six years now yeah. so i believe very strongly that that, that is that, that is on one side the second side of it is sometimes we, we we look at the very wrong places to get learnings from yeah i looked at one thing that has helped me to grow even stronger in building this community is the agbarus how do you mean? My God, they are the most organized set of people. They have Absolutely. an hierarchical structure okay. that makes the person who is at the bottom know that the person who is at the top Loyalty. is his benefactor. Hmm. And the person who is at the top of that, so it's, it's a pecking order. It is very, very structured. And when I mean structured, the guy who is taking 200 naira at the boss pack knows that if I mess up this 200 naira, it's the affected. whole system, yeah. it's, not, it's not my boss. Yeah. The whole system is affected, so which is why you see them chasing buses. Mm -hmm. They are chasing buses because of an ideology, mm -hmm. not because of money. So until we get to the point where we're not, we're not pushing money, we're pushing an ideology, which is Nigeria can actually be the biggest country in 2050. That is when we can now say, yes, we are pursuing a bigger picture that is much more than today. So even if the money doesn't come into my pocket today, I know I am working for a greater good. Yeah. That is where we need to. So yourself, herself, herself, every one of us in our small pockets need to start first build that sort of community first. Now, when those communities happen, what happens is a rumbling at the bottom. When that rumbling happens, we will connect. We will connect because we will then know that at this point you have a silo, you have a silo, you have so a silo. So we now start to merge. We, because we that will, was what I didn't see. I was expecting a third course, for instance, at the election. But somebody has a question. Yes. It says, Good evening, Uwa and family. Okay, thank you. So I understand <laughs> brain drain is. Um, is the Im immigration of highly skilled trained professionals from a country to another country now this is drastic drastically on the rise in this part of the world mm -hmm. nigeria especially and it's gradually sprouting up reasons for concern i want to know what exactly is the cause of this is the problem lack of favorable professionals opportunity here in the country or is just from mere desire to seek higher standards of living who and what can we blame for this? I feel like the rapid immigration of um, professionals is, in the next few years, would probably, uh, probably go higher. It, it's yeah. on the high. It's, yeah. it, it keeps rising, and because you know, initially it was African. We had a, a 25.5 percent in the migration within Africa. Now the desire, the desired location is now the very developed countries mm. like Canada, US, and in the UK, and even as far as Australia. And that is because people are thinking about the standard of living. Yeah. Right. So we call it standard of living. So we're thinking about it from that perspective. What but the thing mind? is, the thing is, what defines standard of living, if not what we've been fed with as per narratives? Sincerely speaking, I How tell do you people. Mean? Okay, so if you haven't seen a picture of maybe like a, a water a waterfront or some beach resort or something of that nature, you are not informed to say there's a there's a possible thing as oh this is grandiose. Yeah. But what we don't what we don't think about is I have been abroad for a bit, and I have friends who are there. Every money you make is taken back by the system. Yep. Mm. Because the system must work to support that system. But in Nigeria, we want to escape the, the pain the system to make it work. And that's because we feel everybody eats We feel our, si our money, money where we pay the system. So if we have a system where, and, and I, tell you, I tell you this truth, if Nigeria can, can actually harness that potential of being, let's solve the road problem. Let's solve the water problem. Let's solve the electricity problem. Basic. Let's solve the, pa the, the electricity power. Let's solve the energy problem as a whole. Let's solve the, the imbalance in the in inequality. Nigeria is, there's no place like this country yeah. in the real sense of it. So yes. to answer the question, mm. the problem is people want a better life. 
Now, the better life might be subjective or relative. However, we can't blame government, we can't blame people. What we need to look at is a solution, which is creating more opportunities for those who are here to actually build a system that can ensure that. Because it's a very young country. It's 17.9 yeah. years old as the average age in yeah. Nigeria. So we cannot ignore that reality. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. <laughs> Just we're going to start like, yeah, we've said a lot and we're going to keep saying yeah. uh, because the whole idea for the show is not just to talk because we feel like yes, talking. Yes. We want to we want to reach out people because we know there are people out there right now. They're already signing immigration papers. Immigration papers. <laughs> immigration papers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yes. I I so I catch us live. Thank you so much. Um, Ayola. Ayola for coming. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, catch us every weekend from Fridays to Sundays at 8 p.m. as we bring thought provoking and engaging and informative conversations to your screen. So you can watch a repeat of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. Please keep the conversations on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. In case you missed the quote for today, say a great way to learn about your country is to leave. That's from Henry Rollins. Do you believe in him? <laughs> Do you believe that? Partly, yes. Yeah, and so. You, you, you appreciate it better when you're out of there. Yeah. yeah, so enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank I really you. enjoyed myself. <laughs>